Hello traders, my name is Oliver Velez and I am your trader for life. I want you to imagine that you have a relatively long rope and one of the one end of the rope is attached to your belt buckle. The slack or the rest of the rope is coiled in a circle down at your feet. The other end of the rope on the ground is wrapped around your future profits. Now, start walking forward. And what will happen? Your profits won't come with you. You will walk. You will separate from your future profits. You'll grow the distance between you and your future profits will grow wider and wider and wider until the entire slack of the rope has been played out. And it is only then you must last long enough in your journey, last long enough in your walk, last long enough in your pushing forward to get to the place where the in all of the slack in your rope has been played out. But you can't stop there. The moment you feel a tug, the moment you sense that there is no more slack in my rope, that's when you really must put the pedal to the metal. That is when you really must kick it into high gear. Because this is what the entire journey was about. This is what lasting was all about. To get to this point where there is no more play in my rope. And so that every additional step I take forward from this particular point brings my P&L forward. I love these things about trading. I love the fact that it's difficult. I love the fact that it's challenging. I love the fact that it exposes my frailties. It helps me lay bare to the world, to my skill, to my activity, what I'm lacking, where I'm failing. It challenges me in a way that causes me to know more and more about who I am. I love the fact that a very small percentage of people actually get this activity down. Many people actually, unfortunate circumstances, don't appreciate those things about this activity we call trading, but these are the things that make it special. This is a journey. It is not a journey with an ending, but it is a never ending journey. And because it's a journey, one has to be able to accurately assess whether or not you are developing, growing, maturing, seasoning on this journey. The fact that it is challenging every single day in new and different ways is an aspect about trading that I absolutely and thoroughly love. Am I actually better than I was next week? Am I better than I was last year? Am I progressing? Am I going backwards? Am I staying stagnant or the same? In my experience, most traders are delusional about where they are in their personal journey toward trading success. Most of the individuals that fall into the casual trader group, I found really are using incorrect barometers for attempting to determine where they are in their particular journey toward a higher level of trading mastery. Now, everyone who does this activity we call trading, everyone who picks it up, everyone 
who was bitten by the trading bug has one desire to become better, to become more sophisticated as a market participant, to become more accurate, to become more profitable, to become a master. Even the ones who have no intention of this being their sole source of survival, they want to become masters at this. This is what happens when you're bitten by this particular bug. And so I think it's very necessary for individuals who embark on this journey to actually be able to accurately determine and to assess where they are in their personal journey. Most people have no idea of what to use, what barometers to use, or how to arrive at a conclusion. The two ways that most novices and neophytes use, the two ways they use or think they should use to determine where they are is their P&L, number one, and time in the game, number two. These two things could not be more inaccurate, more inappropriate. They could not be more inappropriate as gauges, especially in the first part of your development as a trader. They could not be more inaccurate, more ineffective. They could not be more of a false witness to your growth and your development as a trader. I would say in the first quarter or so of your development, of your life as a trader, it is inappropriate to look at your P&L, to look at your progress from a monetary standpoint as the guideline or the barometer of your development. Because during those beginning years, there is oftentimes and almost every time a very wide disparity between your growth and what you're in the picture of your trading account. You grow opposite in the beginning. And this is what makes the beginning so incredibly frustrating for the vast majority of traders that they feel that they're growing. They feel that they are more sophisticated. They feel smarter than they were last year, last month, last quarter. They feel more knowledgeable. They feel more seasoned. Yet, when they look at their trading account, that trading account speaks a very, very different reality. If you ever have a hope of succeeding in anything in life, the first thing you must understand before anything else, before going out and getting skill, before trying to become better than everyone else at something, is that you have to last. In order to win, Oliver, he used to say, you have to last. That's the first thing. You can have zero skill, and if you last, you still have great odds of winning. Because the vast majority of people in this world cannot last long at anything. The vast majority of people, he would tell me, will drop out like flies in the first part of the effort. More will drop out in the second phase of the effort. By the third and fourth phase of the effort, they're almost all gone. 85 to 92% of the people are eliminated, gone, just via time. The concept of longevity is an eliminator. Concept of perseverance is an eliminator. Time is generally an eliminator. Sticking with something 
staying with it long enough will by default put you in the minority class. And then by being in the minority class, just a little bit of skill, a little bit of talent, a little bit of know-how throws you way over the top. You do not have to be spectacular. The biggest hump you have as a trader is in the first few years of your trading life because it is during this period that the P&L speaks nothing about your development, your progress, your seasoning, your growth. Yes, it is possible to grow immensely in the first two to three years and have your P&L speak nothing similar to that truth. Your P&L is not a witness to your growth in the beginning. Your P&L is a liar. You see, life doesn't reward the lucky. Life rewards the laster, the individual who outlasts almost everyone else while putting in true effort. Life rewards that person. And then that person starts to experience what many people fundamentally call luck. Luck shines on those who last and put in true authentic effort while they are lasting. Time and authentic effort. Time so that you outlast the majority. Authentic effort so that all you have to have is just a little bit of talent once you have lasted and nothing will ever take you out. One of the most difficult things to do in the beginning if you do not have guidance, if you do not have someone in your corner, someone in your life that is constantly reminding you, constantly keeping you motivated, constantly shining the light of awareness on the fact that it is supposed to be so during this period. In fact, if it were not so, it would be luck. The fact that you are experiencing growth internally and are not seeing the physical evidence of that is the fact that growth is happening. It is one of the great tragedies in trading life that people don't last long enough to allow the play, the slack in their rope to run out. They don't walk long enough. They don't push far enough. They don't last. Guys, it's all about internal change first becoming a better you, becoming a more disciplined you, becoming a, um, just in the form, in the area of trading, becoming a better trader before you have money. And then the money comes. And that is my personal experience in this space. And this is what we do. But everyone wants a microwave recipe and that's the problem I want it now I want it easy why can't I take a course Oliver and become successful Monday morning and then I say well tell me something else in life you can do that with
What can you do in a weekend in life? What mastery, what, what does mastery come, and what does mastery come quickly? Show me, and I guarantee you, you can't get paid for it. Anything that you can do easily, you can't get paid for it. Anything that's not hard, you can't get paid for it. Anything that you can accomplish a level of proficiency like that, you can't get paid for it. I guarantee you, you the payment is there because most people can't do it. The payment is present because you are head and shoulders above the majority. The payment is there for you because most people won't last. Most people won't put the sacrifice in. Most people won't do it. Most people won't be disciplined. Most people's passion will die out. Most people will run out of money before they reach the finish line. Most people will run out of interest before they get there. The payment is there because you are the minority. And so you've got to move into this with the right mindset, knowing that it's a process. You're going to spend time. You're going to have to fight your way above the masses. And when your head is higher than most, the payment comes, not before that. Your pay comes from the rarity. Microsoft trades the same way for every single trader on the planet. Listen to me. It's the most democratic thing in the world. It doesn't trade differently for you because you're white or black or tall or short or fat or skinny or beautiful or ugly or poor or rich. It's the same stock for everyone. Everyone's path in this game we call trading, this, everyone's journey is individual, individualistic in nature. Everyone comes to the game with a, a unique set of characteristics. Some people are naturally more disciplined than others. Um, some people have some people are more emotional than others. Some people tend to be more mathematical, more analytical than others. Um, some people don't have as many things to sort out in their mind. They come to the game with so many things swimming around in their mind. And it's confusing for them. Some people come to the game blank. I have nothing else swimming around in my mind. Some people deal under pressure naturally better than others. This is individual in nature, which is the beauty of it all. Because everything depends on you. No one holds a gun to your head and tells you when to press the buy button and when to press the sell button. No one forces you to say, should you go in heavy or should you go in light? No one forces you to say, should I add or should I not? Should I take my profits now or should I not? And if I do take my profits, should I take half? Should I take a third or should I kill it all? None of those decisions are anyone else's except yours. in your head, the voice that never shuts up, that bothers you your whole day, the voice that you've gotten so used to hearing every second of your life 
to the point where you don't even realize that you are being bothered by this thing every moment of your life, that's your ego. In trading, that's the last thing you want to be present or the last thing you should be listening to because thought, which is ego, that chatterbox, thought can never be consistent. Thought can never be reliable. Your thoughts betray you in a trade, outside of a trade, in life, in trading. Trading is just a microcosmic version of life, right? So what do I do with traders in their thinking? They know, they will tell you that I teach them to leave their ego alone, to not feed it, which is to not give in to what the ego is saying. We don't follow thoughts in trading. We follow a plan. The plan replaces the ego. So we dethrone the thinking process. Your trading plan is the replacement for your ego. But when you start to deploy a trading plan, a piece of paper with a set of rules, when you start to give the piece of paper the power, the decision-making power, you are taking it from the ego and the ego is going to rebel. It has been in the CEO position of your life and of your trading for a very long time and it will not go down without a fight. And Each time the ego tries to invade your trading plan on that piece of paper, you say, no, 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 no. You know, your voice says, yeah, but you, you know, you should take the money right now. You're up $300. You're up $300. It's only four minutes. It's a four minute trade. $300. Take it. And you say, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I should take it. Then wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me check my plan. Oh, my plan says I only have the right to take profits once the stock moves to a new high. It hasn't moved to a new high yet. Do that over and over and over again. And the voice gets quieter quieter until one day it's not there now what this period does as I told you it builds dignity in the trader it builds discipline, it builds resolve, it builds all the qualities that we respect in a person in life, that they're not moved by a temporary setback, that they don't flip-flop and change at every moment, they're never uncertain, they're always sure, they stick to the plan, they don't quit until the plan says it's time to stop, they, they're not easily tricked are fooled. They're solid. So it builds this character. It also builds experience, which is the number one goal. I've got to get myself out of the way of the market. I've got to get my shortcomings under control and out of the way. I've got to fix my lack of discipline. The secret was in my losses. And by taking a collection of losses, cracking them open, looking inside for the common denominator that runs through all of those losses, that it is, was through that process of eliminating the common denominator every time I found one that removed things until, wow, that there it is. But I only did that through my losses. Don't be fearful that your play is not going to work. You, you, you have to just, you can't worry about 
the future. You can't worry about whether this is going to be the one, one of the trades in 10 that doesn't work, or if this is going to be one of the trades that does work, that's not for you to decide. What you have to be careful of is, am I playing a solid event? Is this event in a good location? Is there conflict in any way? Meaning, um, am I playing this against the moving averages? Am I playing this in the wrong position? Am I fighting color? Am I fighting trend? Those are the things that are in your power to do. Now, once you checked off all the lists, like it's a solid play, it's in a great location, there's no conflict, meaning I'm not violating anything, then that's your destiny. Now, whether it works or not, that's not in your hands. What is in your hands is just take the stop. But then that's where the numbers game of trading comes into play. You've got to let the numbers game do its job. So you, you collect 20 trades doing the right thing. And then you sit down at the end of those 20 trades and let's investigate what happened. Why am I negative or am I positive? What was my biggest losing trade? Let's look at that. What was my biggest winning trade and why? Stand still. To become principles first is your first step as is your first step toward mastery to become so principled that nothing can get you to violate your word and your trading plan. These guidelines are your word. Rules are the substitute for experience. So rules are necessary. Guidelines are necessary. Plans are necessary. Maps are necessary before you have experience. There are too many traders who are fearful that a trade's not going to work. Listen, you're forever going to have trades that don't work forever for the rest of your life. You can't be crippled by that. You just want to lose doing the right thing. That's all. You do understand that psychology is a very big part of this game. The working on becoming a fearless trader is so crucial. And what do I mean by fearless trader? The trader who knows what they play and play it without flinching, without second guessing. Once you know you've done the right thing, if it stops out, so what? It's just one trade in a lifetime of trades. And it's not your fault. When you do the right thing, it's not your fault. The stock is stupid. Experience is the best teacher. Oliver Velez is not the best teacher. What I am good at is guiding your experience, guiding you to the right teacher. So you can gain the wrong experience, but experience is the best teacher. And the way as a trader to be an appropriate student of experience is with the number 20. The elimination of that voice, that chatterbox that will not shut up, that's your ego. The removal of that brings in, creates the room 
for a new voice to come into existence. That's the voice of experience. Now, the voice of ego is the imposter of the real voice, which is the voice of experience. That's the voice that you want to come into being. It will not be present with you during the first few years of your trading life because you don't have experience yet. But once your experience reaches a certain tipping point, that creates a voice that comes from experience. You've got to find a way to start using your losses so that they stop being something that you get afraid of doing and you start to realize these losses are making me better. Learn to embrace your losses. Learn to use them. They are your angels. They point the way. Your losses are like pain in the body, which is not pleasant, but the pain is sending you an important message. Listen, don't put your finger on the fire. Don't touch the sharp glass. They are our messengers. Don't be afraid of them. The losing side is all you. Because the market can't stop itself. So because the market doesn't have breaks, because the market can't stop itself, it needs you to stop it. It doesn't need you to make money. It needs you to stop it when it's not, when something's not right. It needs you to halt the game when you're losing too much. And so your first goal can't be to make money because you haven't become something different from what you are yet. And to become something different requires change over time. controlling of the losing side that creates the winning side it's not the reverse most important role is not the winning side that is the market's job your role is to take care of the losing side and I promise you Just by mathematical certainty, you're going to have the winning side. If you're skillful at keeping losses small, watch those wins start piling up automatically. Discipline is that magic elixir that separates the haves from the have-nots in life. That it doesn't matter what field we're talking about, trading or any other field, what you will always find is that those who've excelled are the most disciplined of the entire group or industry. The central key or the item that separates the non-achiever from the achiever is directly tied to the level of discipline. The more you practice discipline, the stronger that muscle. It's like a muscle. Work that muscle. Your plan is the replacement of your thinking. You're not supposed to be thinking. You're supposed to be determining what's next on that piece of paper, not what you think is next. 
purpose of the list is to replace you. And what I mean by you is the ego you. And the ego you is thought. But your future wins are locked inside of your current losses. Crack them open. Your future winning trades are with you right now. You know where they are? Inside of your losing trades. They're hiding there. First, you have to lose those things. And the way you lose those things, the way you lose your baggage, the way you lose lack of discipline and gain discipline, the way you lose bad habits and gain good habits is through loss. You've got to crack the losing trades open and look inside of them. I don't do anything to produce the wins. I do everything to prevent the losses. I do everything to keep myself alive. I work on the losing side. The market works on the winning side. I just have to stay, get myself out of the way of the market. I don't make the market go up but I can stop myself from profiting from the market going up. Trading is a microcosmic version of life. The market is a microcosmic version of life. It mirrors life. The same, the same characteristics for being a proper trader, trading properly, they're the same characteristics for living life properly. If you work on becoming a disciplined trader, it's impossible not for that discipline to spill over into your everyday life. So you can take trading as the vehicle to make you discipline all the way around, all over your life. It doesn't matter what your PL was that day. As long as you have something, it can just be one thing something noteworthy, something that was an aha moment for you. You can't experience fear. Only the ego experiences fear and ego is not you. So if the ego equals thought, then thought is basically fear. So if you think about every fear in life, no pun intended, it is a thought. The fear that I might lose on this trade is nothing more than a thought. The fear that I might get hit by a car, and if you have not been hit by a car yet, that is just a thought. The fear that you're going to fa fail your test, your exam, that is a thought. So every fear is a thought. Without thought, you can't experience a fear. If you do what I'm telling you to live a thoughtless life as a trader, to only trade what you know, you live a fearless life as a trader. Because you can't fear when you know. You can only fear when you don't know. Fear is never real. average lifespan of 85 years. So over an 85 year period, you will experience true justifiable fear only 15 times in your life. Every other fear is false. Every other fear is a lie. Every other fear is a problem. Every other fear is crippling. Every other fear is from the ego. Relax your shoulders right now. Do it right now. Just drop it. We all realize, well, I was living in a constant state of fear. Fear is at the base of every problem, not only in life, but in trading. 
And so if we talk about the, is there a personality trait that leads to the greatest amount of fear? Yes. The thinker. The person who is constantly thinking is going to have a problem trader. You are in removing haystack needles that aren't the real needle. One by one. Some of you have bigger haystacks than others. That's just life. So some of you have to remove way more haystack needles than someone else. Some of you have to remove less. It doesn't matter. Everyone has their own journey. But no matter how big it is, you have to just start. Because the removal of every one thing is a step forward. It might be imperceptible in the beginning, but it's still improvement. Play the odds, guys. Play the odds. You know, go after things that have decent odds. It's not a guarantee that it, the, that specific play is going to work, but put yourself in the best light possible. If you are um, experiencing any form of real emotion, to be honest with you, it's, it's more novice-like. If you're nervous about making a trade, have you ever questioned why you might feel nervousness or fear? Like, have you ever gone into it and said, what actually am I fearing? It's, it's a question that you should really put to yourself because a breakthrough is in the, in the answer. There's a breakthrough for yourself in the answer to that question. And that breakthrough is reaching a place where you don't fear anymore. And when you don't fear anymore, you're free. The lack of fear is freedom. The, the ego is false. The ego pretends to be something. In order to maintain its existence, it needs your belief. You have to believe that that voice in your head is some is you. It's the only way ego has a reality. You give it your reality. It doesn't matter what your PL was that day. As long as you have something, it can just be one thing, something noteworthy. Something that was an aha moment for you. First, you have to lose those things. And the way you lose those things, the way you lose your baggage, the way you lose lack of discipline and gain discipline, the way you lose bad habits and gain good habits is through loss. If you work on becoming a disciplined trader, it's impossible not for that discipline to spill over into your everyday life. So you can take trading as the vehicle to make you discipline all the way around, all over your life.
got to find a way to convince yourself that it's losing properly that is the key to win winning it is not winning that is the key to winning in this game traders you can't win your way to winning you lose your way to winning respect your losses honor your losses honor the craft the skill the art of losing properly winning is lucky but losing properly is skillful that's not you can't lose properly and be lucky but you can win and be lucky so honor losses you shouldn't fear them honor them practice them become an expert loser I promise you the market will take care of the winners I promise you stocks will go up all by themselves they don't need your help what needs your help is losses losses can't stop themselves the losses need your help right so if you become a master loser the market will appreciate that and take care of you on the winning side item or the thing or the answer that it has the highest probability or the best odds of being right for us and true for us. As I've always been fond of saying, the market itself is sort of like a microcosmic version of life as a whole, and we don't have certainties in our, in our regular lives either. And that's what makes it so vibrant. That's what makes it so special. That's what makes it alive. That that's what makes us feel alive is the fact that we can't have certainty. You've got to find a way to start using your losses so that they stop being something that you get afraid of doing and you start to realize these losses are making me better. Learn to embrace your losses. Learn to use them. They are your angels. They point the way. Your losses are like pain in the body, which is not pleasant, but the pain is sending you an important message. Listen, don't put your finger on the fire. Don't touch the sharp glass. are our messengers don't be afraid of them the losing side is all you because the market can't stop itself so because the market doesn't have breaks because the market can't stop itself it needs you to stop it. It doesn't need you to make money. It needs you to stop it when it's not, when something's not right. It needs you to halt the game when you're losing too much. Your most important role is not the winning side. That is the market's job. Your role is to take care of the losing side. And I promise you, just by mathematical 
certainty, you're going to have the winning side. If you're skillful at keeping losses small, watch those wins start piling up automatically. Discipline is that magic elixir that separates the haves from the have-nots in life. That it doesn't matter what field we're talking about, trading or any other field, what you will always find is that those who've excelled are the most disciplined of the entire group or industry. The central key or the item that separates the non-achiever from the achiever is directly tied to the level of discipline. The more you practice discipline, the stronger that muscle. It's like a muscle. Work that muscle. Discipline, one of the beautiful things about discipline traders is that it's universal. It's universal. You can't become disciplined in one thing and not have that discipline spill over into every other area of your life. This is one of the miracles of becoming disciplined. Your future wins are locked inside of your current losses crack them open your future winning trades are with you right now you know where they are inside of your losing trades they're hiding there you've got to crack the losing trades open and look inside of them I don't do anything to produce the wins I do everything to prevent the losses. I do everything to keep myself alive. I work on the losing side. The market works on the winning side. I just have to stay get myself out of the way of the market. I don't make the market go up, but I can stop myself from profiting from the market going up. I've got to get myself out of the way of the market. I've got to get my shortcomings under control and out of the way. I've got to fix my lack of discipline. Secret was in my losses and by taking a collection of losses, cracking them open, looking inside for the common denominator that runs through all of those losses that it is, was through that process of eliminating the common denominator every time I found one that removed things until, wow, that there it is. But I only did that through my losses. And is this assumption that it's possible someday in the future to not have losses or losing days and that that's a fallacy and I think that's the start of being able to deal with your losses understanding that losses are a permanent part of the game
Losses do not disappear. You just start to learn to lose properly. You don't eliminate losing trades. You don't eliminate losing days. I need you to understand this. This will help you stop chasing your tail in this activity. The goal is not to stop losing. The goal is to lose the right way. Your losses are actually they, they contain the seeds of your future wins. Your future wins are with you right now. Your whole future winning career is with you now. They're inside of your losses. The losses that you're experiencing now, they contain your future. Crack them open. You've got to investigate. You've got to use your losses for your future. They contain your future. Your future of winning trades, consistently winning trades, are not devoid of losing days. Your future is not devoid of losing trades. You're not supposed to focus on winning. Winning is not your responsibility. You're the stopper. The stop is the winner. That it is not any, you don't do anything to produce a winning trade, nothing. You pray, that's all you do. So stop disrespecting loss. Loss is the way you get to your future. Your winning trades are inside of your losses. Stop trying to escape them and, and face up, man up, woman up, face up and do them correctly. You have to set a goal to be disciplined. The same thing with discipline, it's like a muscle. But once it's there, it kind of gets locked in, in a way. And so it's hard to lose it once you have it. Trading is a microcosmic version of life. The market is a microcosmic version of life. It mirrors life. The same, the same characteristics for being a proper trader, trading properly, they're the same characteristics for living life properly. If you work on becoming a disciplined trader, it's impossible not for that discipline to spill over into your everyday life. It is a journey that practically never ends. There is no end to this journey. That it is challenging every single day in new and different ways is an aspect about trading that I absolutely and thoroughly 